Have you seen Steve? I don't know where Steve is. 37 degrees, almost 11 o'clock. Oh, where does the day go? T-Rex, Steve go. So much I want to talk about today. I want to talk more about the anniversary of the Blizzard of 1978, but also the fascinating weather we have going on right here. It's cloudy again today, day two. What's going on out there? We got this big work fishing vessel thing. Uh, it's not fishing, that's a work boat, and then a little leisure boat. It's not quite boating season, is it? But we've begun the meltdown. So I think we barely got to freezing last night and we didn't freeze the ice bucket solid. And now it's gonna completely melt over the next several days. We're gonna have a warming trend as high pressure shifts off to our south. And after, what is it, five days in a row of wind from the north, tomorrow it's gonna be calm and then it's gonna come in from the south. But before we get there, here's the satellite image, it shows the cloud. It's not just an ocean effect cloud. You can see it comes from a landmass, New Brunswick, all the way down into eastern Massachusetts, where again today, it snowed on Cape Cod, and Brandon was there. He got this optical phenomena of the ice crystal refraction there, very pretty in the white ground. Thank you, Brandon, for sharing, always a contributor. And then you can also see the edge of the cloud is pretty much the same place it was yesterday, uh, just west of Boston. It's a totally sunny day, but there's a little something going across southeastern Canada, and there's gonna be a few snowflakes in the air and place like uh, Mount Mansfield, Mount Washington. Look at this boat going by. Is that a Parker? Everyone loves Parkers. They, they get some indoor. Here it comes. Wait for it. Yeah, that's definitely a Parker. <laughs> He's inside, probably with the heat on. Anyhow. All right, let's, let's go north. I want to talk about Bob Copeland. But why do I show the Cannon Mountain web camera when I want to talk about Bob Copeland? Remember him, meteorologist on TV when we were kids? <laughs> if you're as old as I am anyway. But he, he lives in that view. So now let's go to Bob Copeland's house in Littleton, New Hampshire. That was Cannon looking to the north. Now we're in Littleton looking to the south. It's blinding sunshine in Littleton today. And the reason I show you Bob Copeland's website here, Bob Copeland Art. Not only a meteorologist, he's also into high finance. And... Art. He's been doing these weather maps and other art, landscape art, forever, and you can still get his prints and this print of February 7th, 1978, 46 years ago today, shows the surface map in simple forms there with the storm just south of New England and the high with sub-zero cold over central Canada. That was the blizzard of 1978. And an occluded front north of Cape Cod, where the storm was really a dud on Cape Cod. It was north and west of the occluded front. Now let's go to more scientific maps. This from the archive of the National Weather Service. And it shows the surface maps and the low and the high temperature and also the upper level flow. So let's start with the upper level flow. This is 500 millibars. What's that up around 18,000 feet or something like that? And that shows a steering current and you have a cutoff low. And that means that the air up way up in the sky was also coming from the east and the northeast. And in the center of that low is where you get the blizzard loop where the storm comes in there. It goes around the center of that storm in a counterclockwise circle. That's the vertically stacked blizzard loop. It happens with other storms. Uh, we had Hurricane Felix, the perfect storm, a hurricane uh, two summers ago, have done these loops, loops. Sandy, I think, did a loop. So uh, I just call it the blizzard loop because this is where I first learned about it in 1978. And it was a blizzard. <laughs> Anyhow, let's go to the surface map now. It was not that deep of a low pressure system. It was about a 9... Uh, 90 low, that last, those isobars go in four millibar increments, so 996, 992, and you can just infer that it was a 990 low. So it was not that, that strong a storm. I mean, we get 990 lows all the time now. It didn't seem like we did back then. But look at the high. What is wind? It's air moving from high to low pressure. That's a 1052 millibar heavy-duty Arctic high pressure system. That is a total main ingredient when you want to have a blizzard around here is high pressure. There goes T-Rex. T-Rex just ran under my feet and he is calling it a day. Rex was out for three minutes. See you later. Where's Steve? So back to where I was. Yeah, high pressure is an ingredient. And we're going to have to look at that because there is potential next week 
for a low a lot, lot stronger, deeper, with central pressure, going south of New England, past our benchmark. And what's benchmark again? Uh, that would be 40 degrees north, 70 degrees west on the latitude and longitude. That's our benchmark for storms. Uh, it just is the latitude and longitude out there south of Nantucket where the Gulf Stream meets the Laboratory Stream, continent meets an ocean. Anyhow, that's our benchmark and our benchmark storms go across the benchmark. So we may have a benchmark storm next Tuesday. All right, so <laughs> we got to get to that, don't we? All right, so today we have uh, these uh, the clouds decreasing in southeastern New England, going to be increasing in northern New England as we begin our uh, first February thaw. The temperature's probably going to go just barely down to freezing tonight in Boston. Then we're going to start to warm up because high pressure is going to get to our south. So high pressure to our south. Now let's go to the 48 lower contiguous states, that low pressure system that ravaged uh, California, final rainfall near Los Angeles. Some of the hills got 15 inches. Anyhow, that low is going across the Rockies and it's still a fairly deep low. I mean, it's in the 990s, but watch it go up into central Canada. Now at the same time though, uh, stop this temp. Uh, look at the West Coast. Rewind a little bit. The West Coast this afternoon, there's a new... What is it, a 1,003 millibar low coming on the coast of Oregon? That low is going to slide down uh, to California. So now let's get this back in motion again. So a new storm coming on the west coast, nowhere near as bad as the last one, but it is going to be a player for New England. So as the old storm, the most recent old storm, goes north into Canada the next couple of days, we get high pressure to our south. All those black lines are isobars. The wind's coming from the southwest. Those red lines, those are thicknesses. Those are warm enough for rain showers scattered around as... Uh, the cool front starts to come back in Saturday, Sunday, and now we have that low coming out of the central plain. Well, actually, it's in the uh, going down to the Gulf of Mexico, isn't it? And then we're going to have one low kind of slide off on a front to our south on Sunday. And uh, now we have, this is a very important stop right here on, uh, what is this, uh, Monday night? We have, uh, this is our potential storm. I'm going to just hold this for a second. There's a, about a 1,006 millibar low over Lake Superior, Lake Huron. That's very important. And we have our about uh, 1,000 millibar low also near West Virginia. Now, the fact that that's a low in southeastern Canada instead of a high makes a big difference on the impact of a storm we're going to have next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, somewhere in there. So now if we put it back into motion slowly, that low coming out of the Great Lakes seems to fall apart or disappear, but it's really still in there. So instead of having a strong high in Ontario, we've got a weak low. There is a high back to the west of it. You see uh, about a 10, 16 to 10, 20 coming across now the Great Lakes. But between our storm that's to our south and that high that's in the Midwest, there is a low pressure system. So we're not going to have a really incredible gradient, but watch what this low does south of New England now. It's deepening, it's bombing out down to 965 as it pulls away and that mix of snow and sleet and rain is racing through here Tuesday and out to sea. So that low deepens 35 millibars in 24 hours. That's bombogenesis on steroids with this strong storm, but we don't have that strong high to our north. So it'll be windy, but it'll be a lot worse. Uh, scenario if we somehow get high in southeastern Canada. And by the way, this is just one run of the Euro and it's out at se six to seven days. So it's going to change. Uh, the Euro actually just gives us a few to half a foot, a few inches to a half a foot of snow near Boston. Whereas the GFS, which I didn't even look at, but I look at these uh, weather.us graphics, the GFS precipitation amount is 1.8 something inches. So that weather.us graphic is great. You can look at all the different models at one time. So the GFS has a lot more wind gusting past 50 miles an hour and snow, which would be in the order of uh, a, a one to two foot snow. Now, I'm not saying which one's going to be right. I'm just going to say it's going to be interesting. That's next Tuesday. And that's the 13th, right? And some very cold air coming in behind that and no doubt more storminess. Uh, coast to coast action. So I was going to try and do this in a hurry today. A very busy afternoon. So I hope that you got all of that. Uh, the anniversary of the blizzard of 1978, day two. I'm going to call Bob Copeland uh, today and talk to him. But yesterday, I reminisced with Don Kent's son, Doug, who remembers the day well. We'll hear a little bit. Doug does not like the camera, and it was just so nice of you to even say anything, Doug. Uh, yesterday afternoon of February 6th, that was day one. Today was day two. And remember, all the roads were shut down, regardless of how much snow you had in your neighborhood. But right here in the Weymouth, Boston area, we had plenty of snow. Uh, Matt Douglas uh, up at Blue Hill shared with me 
uh, that was 17 inches of snow on this date at Blue Hill on top of the 13 the previous day. So uh, the strongest wind was really the night before, the strongest winds were on the night of the February 6th. Anyhow, what's that boat doing out there? Some kind of work. I don't know. Time to go to work. And more. Here comes in more. Talk to you tomorrow. Oh, now he wants to come back out. No, you're not going back out. Oh, where have you been? All right. A note from your doctor or something? Were you busy? All right. Here's the and more. Don Kent's mom lived on the other side of this house. Don lived in this house. Roger lived in this house. And this house still looks the same as when Roger owned it. Not too many houses on the street still look the same. But the Smiths does as that ocean cloud moves off to the south and east. Let's ask Doug Kent if he recalls the blizzard of 1978. Did your dad say it was coming, Doug? Where'd this boat come from? Lori M. Weren't here last time I was here. Anyhow, I haven't been down here in a while. Looks like we're not gonna need the icebreaker this winter, unless something really dramatic happens. Just a tiny bit of ice in some of the marsh. Looking at the west side of that historic storm leaving Newfoundland. Just gave us a couple of snowflakes on Cape Cod this morning on this anniversary of the blizzard of 1978. Do you remember where you were? It was a Monday. Where were you? <laughs> Same place as you are now, sitting in a chair? No, I was in the car on 128 heading... Uh... No, sir. Yeah. Were you and the people that had to walk home, leaving your car on the road? No, I'm just still early. We hadn't... Uh... It started just... about 10 a.m. We're still moving around, I guess. You don't remember. Right Do you remember where you were that day? <laughs> I was on the road to Taunton to go to work, and at noontime they'd say, go home, blizzard, and uh, went to the store and stocked up with a gallon and um, some uh, hors d'oeuvres, and that was it. Did you go home Pretty to your much. dad? Oh, your dad was probably working. No, I, I was staying with a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful what you say, he's taping it. I know. <laughs> Do you remember what the forecast was? Where'd you get your forecast? Uh, the old man. What did he say? Did he say anything? Snow looks big. That was it? <laughs> pretty Well, he, we got some theory. It was pretty interesting. And, uh, and he, he was very excited, like all you folks get. And, uh, uh, you know, this is big. <laughs> and he packed a suitcase. And off he went. How many days was he at work, you think? He stayed at the Ramada next door at BZ, uh, virtually, and uh, it was like four days. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and what'd you do? Uh, after three days in Braintree, I had to get out, <laughs> and I walked back to North Weymouth. You walked? <laughs> Braintree? Uh, that's all it was. Walking or people pulling sleds. It was pretty uh, interesting, like you never see. And uh, so I saw what all that was about, and uh, then ultimately went back to Braintree by way of one of my friends' house, and they were having a big card game. <laughs> and uh, what else was going on? That's about it, playing cards, drinking. The very first little weather show I watched on tel television was the Daily Almanac from quarter seven to seven, Monday through Friday in WBZ. And that was my first weatherman, my first news anchor. Put on the coffee, honey. I'm coming home. <laughs> There's young Doug and Bruce and Dawn, Bob and Doug and Dawn and uh, Jack and Willard and Dawn and all the boats. Where's the Blizzard of 78 photographs? Do we have any Blizzard of 78 around here? <laughs> We're gonna get a 35 to 40 pound puff. <laughs>